In the early 1900s, the use of machines revolutionized the way people worked. These machines made tasks quicker and more efficient, which meant that workers had more time for themselves. This resulted in a shorter work week, allowing Americans to enjoy more leisure time. With their newfound free time, many city dwellers sought out exciting experiences. One popular destination was Coney Island, located in New York. At Coney Island, people could indulge in thrilling rides like the roller coaster. Another famous attraction was the Ferris wheel, first introduced at the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 1893. These new forms of entertainment brought joy and excitement to people's lives. Another activity that gained popularity during this time was bicycling. Not only did it provide a source of entertainment, but it also offered women a newfound sense of freedom and independence. Both men and women enjoyed the thrill of cycling, exploring new places and experiencing the outdoors. Tennis also became a favoured pastime among many Americans. As leisure activities grew in popularity, so did the demand for tasty snacks. Brand name snacks like the Hershey chocolate bar and beverages such as Coca-Cola registered trademark became widely enjoyed treats among Americans. Sports also captivated the interest of many. People gathered in barbershops and hotel lobbies to listen to boxing matches, while baseball emerged as a beloved pastime. The formation of the National League in 1876 and the American League in 1900 brought excitement to fans, although African-American players were not allowed to participate. In response, they formed their own leagues, such as the Negro National League and the Negro American League, showcasing their skills and passion for the game. During this transformative period in American history, Advancements in technology and increased leisure time allowed people to explore new forms of entertainment and pursue their passions, fostering a sense of joy and independence. Coney Island played a significant role in this era, offering unforgettable experiences to those seeking fun and adventure. In the early 1900s, as education became more widespread and people gained literacy, their interest in cultural activities grew. Art galleries began to appear in large cities across America, showcasing the talents of American artists like Thomas Eakins. Eakins, a leader of the Ashcan School, portrayed urban life and working people with a gritty realism, depicting everyday life without embellishments. Alongside the growing cultural scene, libraries also became common in many cities, providing access to knowledge and literature. During this time, scholars turned to a school of philosophical thought known as pragmatism. This approach emphasized the practical application of theories, ideas, and innovations, valuing their usefulness in solving real-world problems. The influence of pragmatism extended beyond academia and began shaping the government's approach to decision-making. Americans sought various forms of entertainment to fill their leisure time. Vaudeville, a distinctly American form of entertainment, offered a diverse range of acts, including songs, dances, juggling, and slapstick comedy, catering to a wide audience. The circus, with famous names like P.T. Barnum and Anthony Bailey, attracted people with its grandeur and spectacle, promoting itself as the greatest show on earth. The advent of motion pictures transformed the entertainment landscape, Films could be shown multiple times a day, generating significant profits. Additionally, a new genre of music called ragtime gained popularity, blending African-American spirituals with European musical forms. This genre eventually gave rise to jazz, rhythm and blues, and rock and roll. Sheet music and phonograph records played a vital role in making this music accessible and beloved by the public. While light fiction, often referred to as dime novels, captivated readers with adventure tales and heroic characters, some individuals sought more realistic portrayals of American life. Writers like Mark Twain, with his novel The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, presented stories featuring less polished characters, offering a glimpse into the diverse American experience. Twain's work has since become a timeless classic of American literature, Efforts by libraries and art galleries to cultivate public appreciation for the arts faced challenges. 
Many Americans showed little interest in high culture, and African Americans and others were often denied access to predominantly white-controlled cultural institutions. Newspapers played a significant role in entertaining Americans during this era. To attract more readers, many papers employed sensational headlines. Publishers like Joseph Pulitzer and William Randolph Hearst engaged in fierce competition, using exaggerated stories and large Sunday editions filled with comics, sports coverage, and women's news. By the late 1800s, both Pulitzer and Hearst were selling over a million copies of their newspapers each day, captivating audiences with their sensationalized news stories. The early 1900s witnessed a growing interest in cultural activities, with art galleries, libraries, and literature playing a prominent role. Pragmatism emerged as a philosophical approach, emphasizing practicality and problem-solving. Various forms of entertainment, from vaudeville and circuses to motion pictures and ragtime music, delighted Americans. Light fiction and newspapers entertained readers, although efforts to raise public taste faced challenges. The competitive rivalry between publishers like Pulitzer and Hearst brought sensational headlines to the forefront, captivating a wide readership. There was a shift in how Americans approached shopping. With the growth of cities, shopping centers emerged, offering a variety of stores in one convenient location. Department stores became popular, and Marshall Field's store in Chicago was the first of its kind in America. These stores had specialized departments and even introduced the concept of a bargain basement. Chain stores also started to appear, owned by the same person and offering the same merchandise across multiple locations. F.W. Woolworth was a pioneer in this area, offering low-priced items that appealed to consumers looking for spur-of-the-moment purchases. As shopping gained popularity, advertising played a significant role. Companies flooded magazines, newspapers, and even billboards with ads promoting their products. Additionally, Montgomery Ward and Sears Roebuck introduced mail-order catalogues in the late 1800s, allowing people in small towns to access department store items. These catalogues provided detailed descriptions of goods, and by 1910, approximately 10 million Americans were shopping by mail. To further facilitate mail-order business, the United States Post Office established the Rural Free Delivery, RFD, system. This system ensured that packages could be delivered directly to every home, enhancing convenience for shoppers in rural areas.